right. This is my first podcast. I'm very excited. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've been on them, but I've never led one. And I guess I'm kind of leading this um, in a way, even though it's just going to be discussion after a while. But uh, I'm here with Vince and Joe, who I met years ago, and Lisa Chan, former Miss Teen California, <laughs> that I met like 30 years ago. And uh, she's stuck around. Yeah. So... Cool. Anyways, <laughs> now that that's over with, um, we really met, Vince and Joe and I, a lot of people don't know, we met in Rome in a very interesting situation. And when I saw you guys, I was so happy for so many reasons. Um, I was invited, as you were too, to have this two-hour meeting with the Pope. And uh, and I just thought to myself, oh, I want to go, but I am going to get creamed by everyone who, you know, listens to me and they're going to, you know, blast me on social media. And then when I saw you guys, I'm like, oh, good, I'm going to get blasted with them. That didn't happen. Uh, yes. <laughs> and we were thinking, good, Francis is going to get blasted and we'll just sail under the radar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But I thought, you know what, and Vince and Joe, just because you are more educated than most, um, both PhD, Oxford uh, grads, I thought, um, which is proof to many people who don't think I have smart friends. Um, I do have a couple. And, uh, but I was excited because a lot of the questions that would be asked, I thought, you know what, they were there, they're smart. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it started us on this journey because I was so curious um, going there to the Vatican thinking, I've been told one thing, but I've been told things about a lot of people and a lot of, you know, different ministries that later on when I get to know them, I realize that's not really true. Mm. Or, or some places it's, well, that's a lot worse than I was even told, <laughs> right? right? And... I was just intrigued, and so it kind of got us on this journey of like just seeking truth about different things, and then Lisa and I and the two of you were just getting together regularly every week, just discussing whatever, and I thought, you know what, these are questions a lot of people ask, and these are discussions that a lot of people, I think, would love to listen into, mm -hmm. and so that was the idea is let's just record this. I mean, this may never air. This may just be so awkward that <laughs> no one ever hears this, and we just giggle for the rest of our lives. Remember that stupid podcast we never right. even named? <laughs> um, so there's my intro. Where do we go from here? Well, it was neat for us because, you know, to think back on the history a little bit that we met in Rome, mm -hmm. and we were kind of starting to think about questions of, division and unity and yeah. kind of that whole realm of things and then we we stayed in touch but we weren't together and then and then we went you know through something where mm -hmm. really we felt I think division and disunity in a way we never had before yeah. and we felt God convicting us about that and bringing us even to a place of repentance about the role that we played in that but then longing for unity in a way that we hadn't emotionally experienced mm -hmm. before and then independently, without us even knowing it, you were writing a book yeah. on Until Unity. So it's just, and then you were so prayerful for us, both of you and your team, like through that season, and then invited us to come and spend some time with you. So even as we thought about this podcast, it's been neat to think about the friendship and how mm -hmm. some of the themes we're talking about now have been kind of woven together by God into the relationships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys have to say something because it's just I can talk all day and I will and then that's boring and then I should have just done my own and I don't need you guys and that's the whole point of this is the body is I need you I can't say to my foot I don't need you He's not that you're my foot <laughs> <laughs> but what I like about this, so like just being around a table together and talking mm -hmm. is that so often you, know, you go through these pros processes, which take like years of thinking mm -hmm. things through, asking questions, discerning in the context of community, prayerfully. Um, and then you come out on the other side with like, you know, 
your formed opinion and then mm-hmm. everyone's like you said what or like this yeah. happened now in your mm-hmm. life how did you even yes. get there and so often people get the finished product but it freaks them out because they they haven't got an insight into the journey how does someone get there and mm-hmm. and actually what is that a journey that if i'd understood the steps mm-hmm. it would have made sense to me and actually like mm-hmm. it might even be one that i'm on too and maybe i don't even know it or maybe i'm on that journey but i'm feeling like i'm the only christian in the world who's struggling with this stuff and i can't tell anyone or talk yes. about it because it's you know no one will understand me so i think part of the reason this is if nothing else we may never reach any conclusions yeah. or like come up with some kind of okay so what next but you know just the meaningful and um, processing together and inviting people into that space of being able to kind of like peel back the curtain a little bit and be like what mm-hmm. w- what are the questions other people are wrestling with and um and hopefully it just it helps people to feel like i'm i'm not on my own yeah. in, in some of this so mm-hmm if we can just encourage a few people that mm-hmm. that would be a good thing. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the things I've really been encouraged about, um, by both of you and, and your team is like a willingness to ask questions, yeah. um, a willingness to continue to pursue truth and unity and, and not sort of assuming that you'll have, you have it all figured out yeah. and that you have a monopoly on the truth. Yeah. And it's, it's encouraging for us, you know, mm-hmm. you know, as people who have been thinking about these things for a long time, have been in ministry, yeah. for years but it feels like you're still willing to ask questions that most people don't ask anymore yeah you have conversations that most people aren't having anymore and like why well i can see i can see why people don't want to ask questions because i started asking questions of of people you know like on because i was a cessationist and then i'd go to a charismatic guy and i'd say so ask some questions I want to understand and then suddenly it blows up on social media you know right. and I'm this heretic and then it's like gosh I'd like to kind of see what's you know Roman Catholicism it, and they're seeing what happens when you ask a question you're going to get slammed yeah. by your little circle yeah. right and so a lot of people don't have a safe place to ask questions yeah. because even asking it and showing a little curiosity and you know they'll say oh you're going down the slippery slope you are not go down that and so at this point i don't even care anymore you know like i've taken all the hits or whatever and now i think a lot of people actually have the same questions i have mm-hmm. they don't want to voice them and i have the freedom to do so right now right. and so i want to discuss it without people getting so afraid that i'm like ditching my faith and I'm, I'm walking away from Jesus or I'm walking away from the true faith. I I love him and depend on him more than ever. I feel closer to Jesus. I love the word of God more than ever. I'm con- as convicted by this book a- as I've ever been. I feel like there's a new courage and mm-hmm. I'll do whatever this book says. But mm-hmm. I have some questions of does it clearly say that? Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. I. I hope this will help other people who have the same questions be able to maybe hear those things discussed without feeling like a heretic. That's mm-hmm. awesome. But Lisa, I'm interested in your experience of that. <laughs> uh, so Francis is a cessationist, and then he, he meets some folks and <laughs> asks some questions, and now all of a sudden he's like, oh, I'm not sure what I think about this. Right. Yeah, and a, a lot of our journey has been in a way, me a few steps behind because of just having a big family, being at home, taking care of children, um, and and like blessing him as he goes out and serves the world and ministers around the world, and getting to come along on some of it, but a lot of it has been more from home. Um, and so he would come back, you know, with all these things that God has shown him or what he's seen and so sometimes i'd have to play catch up um but the thing that i feel most grateful for is it's true that when you haven't seen it yourself it's very hard to have a context for it but you know i think about the summer we spent i think it was last year with all the kids we went around this whole community that has really kind of been slammed in social media or even just by the Christian church, um, just believers that really love God. And when you spend Mm. time with people, you Mm -hmm. have relationship, you sit at a table and you're eating meals and you're listening to them talk about the word of God, like that it has power and authority in their life. 
and all of a sudden that little like comfort comes like oh I see the spirit of God in this person I see that they love the word I don't have to be afraid of them I need to um you know we all hold to the same beautiful truth that Jesus is everything and that there is one way to the father and you know so yes there's been times where I've struggled with fear or trying to play catch up you know with the gifts I think so much of my heart I would just be afraid like if God if we pray for healing and my children you know pray these prayers over people and God doesn't heal Mm -hmm. is that gonna hurt their faith you Mm -hmm. know so you're taking like very real fears and yet knowing that the word clearly shows that God heals and I want them to experience all of who God is yes so you're just kind of trying to hold it all like lord i don't know how to navigate all of this i'm just praying Mm -hmm. um that you increase our faith that you increase my children's faith that we learn to say you know the lord gives the lord takes away the lord heals the lord doesn't heal but blessed be his name he is worthy of our praise and so i don't know there's just a lot Mm -hmm. to try to navigate but we want to be on this journey and we want to we want God's heart we want unity with the body all over the world and they're not always going to look exactly like Mm. us and do things exactly like us oh it's Mm -hmm. so encouraging I remember in one of our conversations I think it was a couple weeks ago um, I said that a question that had become important to me was to ask regularly with some regularity is there is there any belief of mine that has changed Mm -hmm. in some way over the last year or the last two years or the last five years and sort of the point was that if I don't think I have a monopoly on truth and if I'm still listening to other people and learning from other people I shouldn't go five years with no belief of mine Mm -hmm. whatsoever changing right that that would kind of show that i'm not listening to people anymore like i think i've got it all figured out and that's sort of a dangerous place to be in but then but then i really appreciated like you you joe and lisa you as well like there was also a caution there because everyone's deconstructing their faith now and it feels like once you start to ask questions and say hey my belief shouldn't be the same five years from now that they are today well what's to stop that from us not believing in Jesus Mm. in five years. So I wanted to kind of almost pause in the flow of our discussion a little bit and talk about that because that that seems really important. And I kind of brought up that that question, you know, a little abstractly, and I thought you guys made that concrete in a really helpful way. Yeah, Mm. I think there's there's the fear of um, what are other people going to say about me or what are they going to think I've done, whether or not that's true. But I think... There's also that root fear sometimes of if I start to ask questions, I get scared for myself. Like, what might I become? You know, far worse than what are other people going to say about me is, I want to. Be- I don't want to betray God. I don't want to betray Jesus or myself in some way who he's made me to be um, by opening up these questions. And so, but then the problem is if, if, you, if you have questions, but you're not dealing with them, <laughs> you just kind of try and suppress them. They just like... They stack and stack Mm. and stack until eventually it becomes this mountain of doubt that then topples and Mm. crushes you. And I think part of the issue maybe we're having a little bit in the church is that people have had questions. And even as a church, we haven't known how to give people the space to like work through them in in a healthy way. And and so people feel frightened. I I, I, it was particularly during and the year is doing my master's in focusing on the Old Testament. And I was struggling with some questions about you know, some of these passages in the Old Testament and the character of God. And mm-hmm. I remember reaching this like critical point where um, I kind of was scared I was going to wind up in this ultimatum where either I would have to say the Bible wasn't mm-hmm. true or that God wasn't good. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to say either of those things because you know, I'd love Jesus mm-hmm. and he loved me and I had this deep relationship with him. I looked at Christ and I, I knew he was and I knew who God was good. But I also didn't want to say that the Bible wasn't true because, yeah. you know, I believed Jesus was God. He <laughs> And therefore I wanted to treat scripture the way he, he treated it. And also the Bible had been so alive in my life. God had been mm-hmm. speaking to me through it in my heart. So both of these things were so fundamental to me. But I also didn't feel like I could cop out of like engaging with some of these questions about God's character and some of the warfare texts that, you know, how does he deal with the Canaanites, some of this stuff. And, and I felt like I had nowhere to go because 
I was scared if I brought my questions to the table in my church that I would so doubt for other people yes. who weren't even like mm. dealing with it at the level I was. So mm. I would go away and so doubt. And then maybe if I even res- came to a place of resolution, I might have still left them mm. <laughs> in a crisis. And so it felt overwhelming. And the temptation was just to run from it. Run away. And I remember thinking to myself, is it going to be like, you know, like Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz? You like, you pull back the curtain Mm. and it's Mm. not true. And there's just this little Mm. old man in the machine. Like the whole thing was fake. It was too good to be true after all. It just wasn't real. There was this fear in me. But but that didn't get resolved by running from the doubt or by trying to shut it down or, or to shut God out of it. And I think this was a crucial thing. I started trying to resolve it without God and I was getting nowhere. Mm. And it was only when, when I actually stopped running from the doubt and started running to God with it that um, he transformed the situation. And it wasn't like an overnight thing, mm. you know, but actually really saying, God, I, I believe that you are bigger than my questions. Mm. And I actually... I'm not willing to let go of either of those things because Mm. I I came to both an informed place of believing Jesus Mm. is God and he's Mm. good and also that scripture is true, but also that's been my experience too. Everything has backed that up. I'm not going to let go of it now Mm. because I'm struggling with this stuff. So God, Mm. would you help me in the context of reading scripture, commentary, Mm. study, community, prayer, just Mm. just bringing it all together with a group of people, taking that journey of, of trust in God rather than saying, I'm going to write you off and assume you don't have good answers to my questions saying Mm. I'm going to believe you to be God Mm. and I'm going to journey through this with you. And that was so transformational, Mm. wasn't it? That year, I mean, Vince has watched me go, it was our first Mm -hmm. year of marriage actually. So that was hard for you. You you married me and then six months in, I'm like, oh, I'm struggling. And um, we're 13 now today. We're 13 today. So we made it. (laughs) Yes, happy anniversary. But, you know, but God, it was almost like God took me on that journey, but but when we went through it with him, rather than trying to do it without him yes. mm-hmm. and looking to him, like mm-hmm. ultimately it was so beautiful because he, he brought us to a place of being able to say like, actually scripture's better than I thought, not mm-hmm. worse. You know, the very texts that were like, mm-hmm. I was stumbling mm-hmm. over and freaking out over actually became the ones almost that I, I loved the mm-hmm. most because I, I came to see in a deeper level within in having wrestled it through oh, like God's more holy, like Mm. he's more just, Mm. he's more good, he's more loving, he's more compassionate, he's Mm. all of these things. But but it was because of a willingness to actually enter into those questions Mm. and not be afraid um, and not run away, but bring them to God and say, you know, like Isaiah, like let's reason it out together. Let's let's go into that journey with you. But but that took courage and, um, and it took believing God was big enough to hold me, yeah. you know, and mm. and so I think that's transformed our experience yeah. of question asking, hasn't it? Now, yeah, because yeah, this, no, this is really important. Um, yeah, I'm wondering how you guys think about that, like mm. the distinction between here's what we know that we know that we yes, know, yes, and here's what we're willing to ask questions about. Yes. Um, how do you make that well, distinction? I, yeah, I feel like people need to know some of that, otherwise it. Right. You know, I've had friends that I, I knew where they were headed almost like, mm. you know, they had this weird, um, I don't know, I, I shouldn't say weird, just it, an unbiblical belief system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so they would almost try to take people that were Christians and start to move them over to this thing. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there's there's just so much deception out there. Right. And... And I get that. And so anytime people are questioning anything, there's like red flags go up. And and I want to assure like people that are listening, like just like what you said, the more I study the Bible, the more I mm. love it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I was telling <clears throat> a congregation, this was like the best week of my life. And like, <laughs> what happened? I go, I just understand the Bible better. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm so amazed to be a part of God's plan. I was studying it with a Messianic Jew who is, you know, helping me through the Old Testament into the New and just showing there really is such a continuity Amazing. that I even hate the Old Testament, New Testament. It's so seamless all the way to Revelation and you get to like you know, the the eternal state and you see the bride of Christ and the new Jerusalem and this new garden. And I'm just going, oh God, this is so beautiful. I can't believe I get to be a part of this. And, and I just think about all the ways that Christ has come through in my life. 
and, and the journey, mm -hmm. even finding out more about my childhood and everything, I'm just like, wow, God, you protected me from all of that. I mean, just sitting across from you, uh, Vince, and knowing you should have died a month ago. <laughs> right. You right. know, like you literally should not be here. I mean, if you guys knew, you know, the fall that he took and just the tumbling down this rock mountain right up to the edge of a cliff and getting stopped by this tiny tree that was just out of nowhere. I mean, it's just like, I when I saw the pictures and everything else, I'm like, how are you still alive? I mean, we've had these, not, not just, I mean, we've had these incredible promises from the word of God, answered prayers, but then these supernatural events in our lives where I go, I am not questioning Jesus being the son of God who yes. died on the cross yes. and rose from the grave and is coming back for me. Um, I'm more questioning the church and going, hey, how did we arrive here yeah. at all of these denominations? And, you know, I was taught one thing, you know, and in my 20s and and then for the next 10 years, probably spent the next 10 years defending that view because I learned how to defend it. Yeah. And But then you start meeting people that love Jesus deeply, are committed to a life of holiness, you know, love the word of God, and they interpret a passage different from you. And you start to listen from their perspective. And you go, oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense too. Uh, you know, I, in fact, that actually makes more sense, I think, than what I'm trying to defend here. And, and why do I trust myself so much more than, yes, than them? Exactly. <laughs> and it used to be that I used to think, no, if I sit in an office with my Bible software, my laptop, and all these commentaries, and I just pray, I'm going to come to the best interpretation. And I just see the silliness in that, the mm -hmm. arrogance in that and believing that there's a power in unity when brothers dwell together and God commands his blessing. And so when I see other spirit-filled, Bible-believing, you know, just Christ-loving people, and we have an opportunity to discuss and study the word together, I go, okay, this is a great opportunity. Just like with the elders of the church, when we study and we ask questions, and that's been a weird thing, because as elders, We've been sitting around discussing things, and I'm telling the guys, this never happens in happen. church. <laughs> because normally you start a church in a denomination, and now you, there's nothing to discuss. You just defend the denomination's beliefs. Mm -hmm. But we're sitting as an elder board going, gosh, what do we really believe about communion? Is the real presence of Christ there? Does it turn into the flesh and blood? You know, is it just a symbol? And it's like, well, shouldn't have you guys, shouldn't you guys have figured that out beforehand? And well, we didn't, or maybe we thought we did, and then we were challenged, and now we're answering. And I believe that in a loving community, as we ask these questions, I'm going to come up mm. with a more accurate yes. answer if we come in humility and love with each other and in prayer, united, and say, God, we just want to know the truth. I don't care. I really don't care. Mm -hmm what this I, you know understand what i mean by that i don't care what this verse says i just want to know what it says and then i'll do it mm. like i don't have a preference i'm not going into scripture going oh this is what i want to believe so let me find it mm. i'm right. going i just want to know what it actually says and i want to know what people have believed throughout time and i want to know what's right and what i can apply biblically and i believe you guys can help me come to a better answer than if I were just sitting in my office by myself right now. And I think that has to be the starting point for any discussions about unity as well. Because yeah. if you think you have the complete right way of thinking about everything and everyone else doesn't, then, then yeah. you're not going to listen to each other. You're never going to be able to come together because you're not thinking you can actually learn from the other person. So yeah. you don't treat them with the, the respect that they deserve. And there's, there's not a mutuality about mm -hmm. that conversation. So mm -hmm. I've been really encouraged by that. And a lot of our conversations have, have focused around kind of the theme of unity in the church. And, and I admit, like when we first started talking about it, I, I almost felt like a shyness getting that out of my mouth mm -hmm. because when you just say the phrase unity in the church, it just feels impossible mm 
Mm-hmm. Like it almost feels naive. It feels yeah. like it, you sort of have this childhood idealism right. mm-hmm. that you would even kind of talk about such a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. But it's you like, know, it's like you're in a beauty pageant being like, well, peace. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, right. Peace. It feels like. <laughs> I, d- I doubt you ever said that. <laughs> you could much chime better in. Speaking of beauty pageants. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yes. I hope I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> if you did, you said it very well. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Sure. You won. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you talk about that experience? Oh my god. When you were crowned. <laughs> I like Okay, to short interlude here. Short interlude. <laughs> short interlude. We'll be back to unity in the church in a you minute. Need a break? No. Oh <laughs> Just trying to get you to talk. <laughs> I like to listen and then as the spirit leads, then I okay. say something. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have a leading right now. Good. I mean, you know. A little one. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go, go, go. I was just thinking that there's there's these two kind of maybe two veins. I don't know that might be oversimplifying mm-hmm. it, but people that either try to be um, humble by saying, you know, who am I mm. to say what religion is right or that how you get to heaven or, you know, who am I? Who am I? Yes. As if we can't have any courage or power or authority mm. to say, no, I know what's true. There are truths. There are absolute truths. And so I was actually able to challenge a young man once who said that to me, like, well, who am I? And I said, you're right. You, you and I are nothing, but God has said, I am who I am. Mm. And so God, has, God gets to speak. God gets to say, this is who I am. This is how I reconcile you to me. Mm. Um, so in a, to me, in a sense, it does kind of come to, down to the authority of Scripture because it is our revealed like understanding of who God is. So mm. much comes through the Spirit. I don't want to yeah. deny that. Mm-hmm. But what I would really challenge listeners and people, like if you have not read the Scriptures, yeah, good. like mm. beginning to end, and I grew up in church. I, I had the like Old Testament is weird mindset without even really verbalizing it, but right. just thinking... I don't get God in the Old Testament. Um, I kind of want to just stick in the new, you know. But as a church, we had this reading plan in these last 10 years or so where we've been reading the scriptures every day together, the same passages. And so you end up reading the Bible in about a year. So over and over, you're reading the Bible every year, start to finish, start to finish. And I felt like I felt more in love with who God is, a greater understanding of his holiness, his majesty, a greater humility of, wow, I don't understand anything about the Lord. And yet I feel like he's revealing so much to me but I don't get it at all, but I'm so in, and I believe and know that God is good and faithful and real. Mm -hmm. And so many times we find that the other strain of people, which I was going to talk about, is without even verbalizing it this way, I feel like they sort of put themselves above the Lord. Like, I can, in my kindness and in my understanding of how to love people, I'm going to come up with this freedom and this, Mm. hey, you can just do whatever you want, live Mm. however you want, be whoever you want. But that's not true. That isn't love. That isn't kindness. God Mm. gets to decide what is right and and who we are and what he's called us to. And so there's a lot of us. We have to come under the authority of God and submit to God's ways. And so I feel like there's Mm. two different, does that make sense? Like Mm -hmm. two different camps that kind of come against yes. the Lord. I don't know. Oh, that's so, that's so, because I, I think about even um, in the culture we're in, which I feel like the church is kind of picking up some of those same threads. It's almost mm-hmm. like um, certainty is, is a sin. That's right. like the ultimate sin. Whereas actually what's valued in culture is a kind of open-minded skepticism where you don't ever really come to any conclusions because everything's gray it's shades it's not right. black and white and black and white is offensive but you know it's there's something value in saying well I'm we're just always on a journey of of learning and and we've got to be so careful with that yes. because as you said like yeah you're right we can't what do we know of ourselves but there is a, a god who's incarnated and revealed himself and said i'm the way the truth yes. <laughs> and the life and i will show you what is true 
And so in our, you know, even as we're coming to a table, he's saying, hey, questions are valuable and they have an important place in the life of, of the mind and the life of faith. Um, but you do that not because you're like, well, everything is up for grabs. We'll ask any question and we get to determine what our truth will be. <laughs> but it's right. saying, no, like, Lord, like, show us. Like, you revealed mm. Jesus to us. Show us more. Your Holy Spirit. Mm. You say when you give us the Holy Spirit, he will lead us into all truth. Mm. So we, we just want to be humble enough to be led yeah. and to not get stuck on like a, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we just, you know, we were going along with the Holy Spirit for a while, but then we took a detour and we kind of stayed here mm -hmm. instead of saying, mm -hmm. I want to go deeper into you. I want to know more of who you are and, and the mm -hmm. freedom to ask those questions uh, because you're trusting who's leading you, not because you have such great confidence in your intellect or in your mm -hmm. thought process or in your individuality and mm -hmm. how special you are. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. like that process of like, God, just like, I just want to know more of you and, and actually believe in that to know more of, of, of God who by his very nature is love mm -hmm. and is one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism mm -hmm. would actually be a journey into unity mm -hmm. and it would be a journey towards each other, mm -hmm. not away from each other, which mm -hmm. is where we always seem to wind up in our yeah. individualism mm -hmm. and our denominations and our breaking down. We're like, we split, we split, we split, we split. Like mm -hmm. we take all these trails and we go away, away and we branch like a tree and it's like, ah, oh, shouldn't we be coming back to the root, not away? And um, mm -hmm. so maybe that's some of the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah and it, it. it challenges this assumption that like disunity is all there could be. Mm -hmm. And you know, Francis, I've heard you talk about this. Like, it's yeah. it's not the way the church always was. Like, there yes. there was a period in history where it looked differently. We don't even think about that. Yes, I I went through seminary and I didn't even know that. I didn't. I, you just assume it's <laughs> always been like this with a bunch of different, yes, you know, factions and. And then it was only several years ago where I'm studying the Great Schism, which I, I think a lot of people aren't even aware of. I didn't really get it. You right. didn't know. I, I mean, it, it was just, wait. So if I was born a thousand years ago, no one would ask, hey, where do you go to church? There's only one church. Right. A thousand years ago. And it's like, wait, so there was no denominations or... Not really. It was just the church. It didn't really have a name. It was just the church. And then it wasn't until 1054 that you have this break from the East and the West. And, and I remember reading like a, a church history book a couple of years ago. When I, I got to that part, I, I just, my heart just sank like, oh, mm -hmm. it's like this big divorce that happened. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, well, okay, we're going to go by this name, and you're going to go by that name. We'll take these kids, you take those kids, and we'll we'll live over here in the west, and you live there in the east. And so, what was that? Was the Eastern Orthodox and the it, Roman? Well, they Catholic? eventually became. I mean, there was one council of bishops, and then in the west, um, the the bishop of Rome, who was like the first among equals, really, of that whole group. He changed something in the Nicene Creed, um, which was like a, a creed that they had come up. When was that? Like four hundred, fourth century, three eighty-one. Yeah, I think so. Fourth century. Okay. Fact check. Yeah, we'll fact check, okay. but somewhere in there, <laughs> you know, three eighty-one, give or take a century. And uh, <laughs> but uh, they, um, you know, they had written like all the bishops together, all of the church leaders agreed. This is what we mm -hmm. believe. We believe in one God. You know. Mm -hmm. And so to change something like that without all of the council agreeing, you know, those in the East were going, wait, you can't just unilaterally do that. Mm -hmm. And so then, and, and there were other things that were going on, but eventually they said, okay, based upon this one statement that they changed called the filioque or something, mm -hmm. I don't know how to pronounce mm -hmm. it, you know, saying, where did the Holy Spirit come from? Did he come just from the Father or from the Father and the Son? That's what the statement was. And so you split, and then eventually the Eastern called themselves the Orthodox Church, mm -hmm. and then the Western became the Catholic Church or the Roman Catholic Church. Catholic meaning universal. But anyway, so then you had this division, and for another few hundred years anyways, and then the Anglicans broke off mm -hmm. from the Roman Catholics in the West, and then... Then came the Reformation. The Reformation. Yeah. Yeah. But I love I love that you said when you read that in a oh. book, you were grieved. Yeah. Because I was I was thinking, if 
if the early church in the first couple centuries yeah. was like shown a glimpse of the future of the church, yeah. right, and was shown that division and then the divisions of the Reformation and then all the denominational visions, I, I feel like they would have torn their robes and like been on their yeah. faces, you know, before the Lord in grief. Mm -hmm. And I found that so convicting to, because for so long I feel like I didn't even think about it. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if, if that would have been the the view of the early church looking forward at what was going to take place. And when I look back at it, mm -hmm. why don't I feel grief over that? Mm -hmm. Why am I yeah. content mm -hmm. to just resign myself to the fact, well, this is the way it is. This mm -hmm. is the decisions yeah. that people made. This is the conflict that happened, and we just inherit it. And that, that's all it could possibly be. Mm -hmm. I'm like massively underestimating just the power of God if I just yeah. resign myself to think that's that's all there could be. And I remember remember we had those friends that came to visit and we were reflecting on the different approach that they had yeah. over dinner. Remember? Yeah, 30 of our marriage and friends um, came to visit uh, from, you know, a different denomination uh -huh. and um, it was over dinner they just kept wanting to talk about these kind of theological points where we saw things differently and uh -huh. I remember finding the dinner frustrating. So I was like, why are we focused on all of this stuff. Why can't we just enjoy each other's company? You love Jesus. I love Jesus. Let's yeah. not get into the weeds here that, you know, like this is not. Um, and at the time I, I thought they were the ones being kind of divisive, you know, yeah. but now I look back and I reflect and I'm like, no, like there was something different in their hearts because they, it bothered them. It bothered them that we didn't see everything the same. They felt the disunity. Mm -hmm. They felt, they, it, right? they grieved it. They grieved the sense and, and to mm -hmm. the point where they wanted to discuss it, not in a contentious way, yeah. but you know, almost as if believing in that conversation, wow. we could have come to a point of, of moving mm -hmm. forward together. I was like, I don't want to go there. You do your thing. I'll do mine. Let's just get yeah. on with evangelism. You know? But, but mm -hmm. I just thought, why don't I care the way that, why were they more committed to us in a sense than we were to them? And, mm -hmm. And I just hadn't felt the weight of, of, of the grief, of, of Jesus' grief, you know, mm. and, and his longing that, that we would be one. And, and there seemed something very wrong about that instinct mm. that, that mm. wasn't there in me. Mm. And, and, and almost the irony that, I think you're right, I think it's probably because we were so focused on evangelism, we felt mm -hmm. called to evangelism, we felt called to reach the lost, and so that's yeah. the main thing, and yet the church is divided, the church is disunited, the church is, has all these factions and doesn't really like each other, but there's nothing we can do about that, like yeah. Jesus will sort that out at some yeah. point. Mm -hmm. yeah. But even in the last season of sort of conflict that we've gone through, I mean, I think we're thinking very differently about this, that actually, like, unity within the church like, is the very foundation for evangelism yeah, and it's like, right. like you know john 17 when yeah. jesus is is praying to his father for the church and he's mm -hmm. saying it, it's when the church is in complete unity like yes. that is when people will know mm -hmm. that i have come from you yeah. and we just try to like skip that part yeah. and think we'll just tell people who jesus is and it's like ah we've been living in in disunity yeah. in the church in our own lives and then trying to tell people about mm -hmm. jesus and then being surprised and sometimes even judgmental of them when they don't accept Christ, when yeah. actually we should be repenting before the Lord, we have not yeah. shown them what the yeah. church is supposed to be. And so mm. no wonder they don't recognize who Jesus yeah. is. It yeah. doesn't make sense. Yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me, right. yeah. even. Like, like okay, yeah. for example, you know, with the body and blood of Christ, communion, the Eucharist. So you guys know this has been huge in my mind for the last couple of years, and we can spend hours talking about this, but um, we won't right now. But what I'll say is I just have such a reverence for the body and blood of Jesus now, the, the, the communion table, because I'm looking at 1 Corinthians 11, and there's a serious warning, like you could die taking of this if you are divided. He goes, this is why many of you, many of you are weak and sick, and a number of you have died because of communion. Yes. And then, it, you know, I'm like, gosh, that's a serious warning. Like nothing else in the New Testament. Wherever, be very careful when you grab that bread. Be very Let's do this the right way. And so Lisa and I, the last couple of, you know, weeks, we've gone to different, you know, like churches like that are different from, and I'm not saying I believe everything, but I just want to see a place where they revere mm. the Eucharist. And so we went to a Roman Catholic Mass. We went to an Orthodox gathering. We went to an Anglican gathering. And I love that oh, we're going to take the whole hour and prepare for this moment because this is huge. I love the, you know, liturgy that was read by, you know, believers for, for 
centuries and mm -hmm. we're saying these same words about Christ. And some of them I'm like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a little bit of a stretch for me and this or that. I'm comfortable, but I love the reverence. And I'm going, okay, this is what I want to show the church and want us to not lose that reverence just because we're meeting in a home or whatever else. And But then at the end of it all, I thought to myself, wait a second. These people, you know, let's take the, the Orthodox Church and the Roman Catholic Church. They're spending so much time exalting the bread and the cup like this is sacred to us. But at the same time, they're not allowed to take of the bread and the cup with one another. Like a, an Orthodox and a Catholic can't do that. And I'm going, wait, but that's the heart behind 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. Right. So you're showing all this reverence, but the very heart was it was supposed to bring us together, and you refused to sit at one table and take of that bread and that cup. And I've asked priests, I go, there's no way you can mm. look me in the eyes right now mm. and tell me, you think this is the will of God that I can't take communion with you, wow. and you can't take it with me. Mm. From Scripture. And so you're guarding some of this. And... and and believe me, I want some of that. I want that reverence. But it's almost like when Christ said, you know, you tithe mint and dill and cumin, but you neglect the weightier provisions of the law. Mm. You know, you should have done the latter without neglecting the form. You know, it's like, I want it all. I want us yes. to be reverent. Let's, let's come to this table. Let's take our time. Man, I don't want to just casually you know, toss one of those, you know, do it yourself, you know, bread and cups and you just, okay, take them in the parking lot. I want that reverence, but I also have to have this heart of, I want to recognize the body of the Lord, that you are a part of the body of Christ. And I get it. You don't just give it to anyone. Mm. But I also say, you don't just deny anyone. You know, mm. it's a crime to just flippantly give out communion. And it's a crime to flippantly say, mm. yeah, I know you're a child of God, but you're not welcome to this table. Mm. I go, gosh, I don't ever want to say that to a daughter or son of God and go, well, I didn't know any other way to do it. No. We have to figure it out. I mean, you seem like you got mm. something <laughs> on your heart. Honey. Yeah, please. <laughs> I'm the crier. <laughs> mm. I just feel mm. like I can just see so much pride in my life. Mm. It breaks my heart. Oh. You know, when you said that you just haven't grieved, <laughs> I thought this isn't a great time to grieve, Lord, but I feel the grief. Yeah, absolutely perfect. And I just. I just know how much pride we have in our hearts. Mm. <laughs> and it's... God opposes the proud. Mm. And I just... That prayer comes to my mind like... If my people will humble themselves... Yes. You know, then I'll heal. We need God's healing. But we've got to start with humility. Not fear. You know, I get it. I get the fear. You know, I think I don't want to start praying to Mary. You know, that goes through my head. That's honest. Right. I like, right. you know, you're trying to tell me to be unified with people that I've kind of always just pushed away. Like, you're different and you don't do it right. Um, and I remember, like, the second time we were able to go to Rome and we were in the Vatican with one of our daughters, mm -hmm. by God's grace. But I was feeling so much... I just feel like the Lord just showed me my pride. It was like, I'm so mm. disgusted by the opulence and mm. just the, you know, so I said something and it was, you know, there's moments where Francis will kind of just cut through and chide me in the best way. But, and I don't even, I can't even tell you what he said, but he was like, you know, they believed they were doing this to honor God. Mm. They wanted it to be beautiful and extravagant and the heart, you know, was to glorify God. It just cut through, like, I'm just coming in with my arrogance. Yeah. And, yeah. 
And sure, there's arrogant people, but there's also real people who just want to honor God and mm. love Jesus yes. and be saved by his grace. Yes. You know? And yes. so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I just, um, I just like pictured Jesus at the table and different mm. people sitting around him and mm. just this like crazy dynamic of, you know, it's almost mm. like we're saying to Jesus, like, oh, can you get, you know, like, Becky over there to, to pass the cup this way. I'd ask her myself, but I don't talk to her. You know, like mm. it's this kind of mm. dynamic of, of, you know, and Jesus saying, but I, like they're at my t- table and I'm the host and and you're my guests and you won't talk to each other. And, you know, and, and in my heart, I'm thinking like, but she doesn't deserve to be here. And, <laughs> and God's like, well, you know, true, but neither mm. do you, right. you know? Like, right. yes. yeah. And then, you know, I'm thinking like, but, theologically she's off the map you know and then he's like well what about we look at your like your issues everything that you've got you know there's just so yeah just so much pride and I mm. um, remember a couple of months after we'd um come to you know we are church and mm. um just reflecting on you know some conflict in our life and mm. and it was while we were in a prayer meeting and, and taking communion together and as as one of the, one of the elders was leading mm-hmm. communion, um, just remember the thought went through my head. I was thinking about this conflict and just felt like this like brokenness in my heart of it just suddenly hit me like the thought came, like we tore each other apart. Mm-hmm. And as I thought that, the elder said, you know, the body of Christ broken for you. And he said, which actually, you know, in the Greek means torn for you. Mm-hmm. And it was like, I just felt like mm-hmm. the elders were saying to me, like, no, you didn't tear each other apart. You tore me apart. Mm-hmm. And it just, it was just this moment of being like, oh my goodness, like we're taking the body of Christ, but we're the body of Christ. And when we destroy each other, like we're tearing apart Christ, you know, like, it, mm-hmm. and it was just so heavy, mm-hmm. you know, and what do you do with that? Mm. I just had this image in, in my head of, you know, if Jesus came back now. It's like, of course, I would feast at his table with, mm. with everyone who knows and loves him mm. in his presence. And so why, w- why wouldn't I do that now? Like, he is present. He, mm. His spirit lives within us. Like, why, why can't we do that now? Mm. Yeah. I don't think I've ever dreamt of that being possible until the last couple of years. Yes. And even now, I, you know, it's very easy to think, well, who am I? You know, I'm going to bring the church to unity. Everyone's tried forever. But then, then I, uh, I mean, last week when we were praying together, I, I'm not going to say this is of the Holy Spirit, but, you know, just a thought came to my mind. I remembered that old, old movie called The Parent Trap, okay? And that's that. It's, uh, I don't even remember the whole story, so I may totally be butchering this. But basically... We apologize to like the producer a, and the director. Yeah, the I, yeah, yeah. For what Frank yes. about to say. Okay, but I'm going to... Here's, here's what I remember <laughs> of it. That there are these twin... There are these, th- these two girls that show up at a summer camp or something, right? Some mm-hmm. sort of camp. And they get there and... They're looking at each other and freaking out because they look exactly the same. Okay. And they're like, it looks like I'm looking in the mirror. This, shut up. This is, who are you? Where did you come from? You know, and one's like, oh, I'm from England. You know. Just I, like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm the worst. Okay. Thanks, Jill. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I'm real good at uh, yeah, that. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> and the other one's from somewhere else. And. Anyways, they get to talking and they realize that they were identical twins. They had to be, you know, trying to figure out their background and somehow their parents must have gotten divorced. You know, maybe they're, you know, right when they were born, you take one, I take one, and let's just start a whole new life. Here they are. They find themselves in this camp. They love each other so much and, you know, laughing together, whatever. And then they play a trick on their parents and go, let's switch. I'll take your clothes and take your plane ticket or something like that. And we'll go to each other's homes you know and they do this whole thing and and you know the mom and dad are like hey you're acting weird and like 
you, you know, and they're just trying to play it off as much, and they're calling each other like, hey, what's that? You know, but the whole plot was, we don't want to be separated. Let's set it up so that our parents see each other again, and then what we'll do is great reveal or something like that. But I just remember, you know, everyone that watched it was just like, you want to see the parents come back together. You want this family to come back together. And I know it's crazy, but there's like part of me that's going, yes. look, we know there's something in us. I mean, it's a, well, there's one spirit. And he, and so it's, it's not even like I'm talking you into something you don't want in yourself. And I feel like we're like these kids, you know, that found each other from different backgrounds. And we're going, okay, I'm not leaving you, you know, just at this table, the four of us. I mean, obviously, we're not leaving each other. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, divorce isn't even a question. But it's like, no, you know, you come from the Anglican Church. You come, you know, your roots are in the Roman Catholic. And, you know, you were actually more charismatic. When we were, yeah, you were the charismatic one. And I was like, yeah, you, you're weird. <laughs> yeah, I confronted your dad, remember? I was like, no, oh, you're bad move. Bad oh, move. yeah. We'll do oh, that. Yeah. We're going to do that on the next episode. That was episode. after we are married, probably. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but it's like, no, we are one in Christ. We're yeah. going to figure this out. We'll figure out the questions. You know, it's like the kids going, I don't know why mom and dad divorced. I don't think they should have, you know? And what could have happened? And I'm very hopeful for the church. The last thing I want this to be is like a bashing thing. Absolutely. It, it's the opposite. I'm like, no, no, we're yes. going to come together. Yes. We're going to come together. Um, I love the old liturgy. I want to be attached to the ancient church. But I've got some real questions. And yes. I don't understand why you guys can't even get along. So it doesn't make sense to me. I, I, I read scripture and I go, gosh, I believe... The miracles shouldn't have just stopped, but I have real questions about those who really are in that world, and and you know. But let's figure it out. Like I'm really hopeful. I believe this is the time when God is doing something um, in our country. You know, when everyone else is like, oh, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. I go, yeah, but what a great opportunity for the church to be different from the world, saying. No, I, I'm dreaming of the day when we're together at one table the way Jesus wanted it because there's mm. no way he would want one kid saying to another kid, no, you're not welcome here. Mm. Um, there's got to be a way without diminishing truth or holiness. Like I am saying I love his commands yes. and I'm fighting for his command and I'm fighting for truth and I'm fighting for unity. And that is not a contradiction. And I'm tired of people making it sound like unity is like this mm, cute little, yes. you know, dream for little kids. And, you know, but us scholars, you know, we, we realize the real problems and why we can't get back together. I'm like, no, that's, that's garbage. I believe in a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. At the core of what I believe in is a God who is perfectly one yes. and then he made me in the image of that triune god so that i could be one with him like that's insane like jesus i and them and you and me may they be brought to complete unity he's telling the father just like you and i are one i want them to be one with us and with each other and i'm going no this is central uh it doesn't, it, it, I just, I want to spend the rest of my life fighting for this. Good, mm. good. Mm. Oh, and I just, I, I just know I need to, I need to repent mm. of, for so long, just, just being resigned to this is the way it is. Yeah. yeah. This is what I've inherited and not believing that God can change it. And I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited because mm. the question, do you believe the church could be one. I feel like for the first time in my life, when I hear that question, my, my spirit wants to say, yes, mm -hmm. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I have to believe in that if I truly believe in the God that I say I believe in. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even ask the question, let alone being ready to say mm -hmm. yes to that question. Mm -hmm. And just what you said, Francis, so yeah, this is in, in no way... Um, 
place of disillusionment, like this is a place of hope. Mm -hmm. I feel excited for, for yes. what's possible. And I'm not content to just know that I have siblings that are out there. Yeah. Right? I want to know them. I want to learn from them. Mm -hmm. I want to live with them. And not just know they're somewhere, somewhere out there. Yeah. Honey, you want to close this with something? Yeah. yeah. Just thinking <clears throat> that, yeah, we want to use, I think someone said in the beginning, the scripture, you know, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. But I'm thinking there's, yeah, one spirit. Mm -hmm. And so we're just trying to, f our desire is to fan into flame. Hmm. That desire, I think it's a God given desire in all of us as His body to be unified. And so, yeah, even our tears and our conversation and our wrestle, it's all towards the joy and the, yeah, just pressing on, like believing it and yes. wanting it and just wanting to, like, yeah. spur one another on to love and good deeds. Yeah. So it's all for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well said. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you close podcast, but mm. um, I'd love to read this passage <laughs> and just kind of end with that. that. Okay. That sounds perfect. I'm just Ephesians 4. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, mm. one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. for
Make me smile. I know you are doing.